Hey, what's going on everybody, and welcome back to another Fallout 4 modding video. Today, we have a brand new weapon release for you, and that's going to be a big, heavy-hitting, late-game rifle known as the Automatic Rifle. That may seem like a pretty generic name, but you might actually recognize this thing from Fallout New Vegas. That's right, this is the Fallout adaptation of the BAR Rifle. Now, this is not going to be a standard variant of the BAR. No, this is going to be specifically based on the Colt Monitor, a version of the BAR used by the FBI, and it actually has some nice custom furniture with a pistol grip. It's pretty dang snazzy. I'm unsure what the base BAR is based on in New Vegas, as it does have a pistol grip, but it's not exactly a Colt Monitor. It's some kind of weird mishmash and mix-up design, but ours is a little bit more like an actual Colt Monitor, offering not only the same stock and pistol grip design, but also the fun funky four stock that has some really, really neat geometry that I think makes this thing look very different and very unique. And as far as I know, we don't have any other Colt monitors on the Nexus. There are a couple of BAR mods, but most of them are rifle format, and there's only one that has really good animations. This one is very, very different, so you could even run both mods at the same time and have them function like different weapons. Especially since our idea with this mod was to lean into the automatic side of the automatic rifle, making this an auto-only version of the BAR. That's right, it is not in semi-automatic. This thing is going to be using full auto and it is going to be using big guns perks. That's right, it's going to be using heavy weapons perks, not rifle perks. Since this is going to be firing 30 6 a gigantic caliber, and it is in full auto, this is intended to be a late game weapon, not a simple rifle. Sort of similar to the classic New Vegas balancing, this is a high damage late game weapon. In New Vegas that came in the form of a DLC weapon, but in ours it's just going to be really, really high level. As you're not really going to be able to obtain this thing anytime until after level 40. And now I did mention that this thing does use 30-06, so it is going to of course require munitions. After we get a round of patches and bug fixes done, we will probably do a vanilla version in 308, but until then it is going to use 30-06 as it is intended and balanced around. A very, very late game weapon with a very high power cartridge, making this a pretty good weapon for taking down big enemies like super mutants and death claws and even enemies in power armor. This thing is going to be very effective against small enemies like, you know, raiders, but I wouldn't recommend using it that way. Treat it like you would a missile launcher or a fat man. It is a heavy weapon with a rare ammo type that is meant to be used for big guys who need a lot of damage to take down. It would be a waste to spend this on something small like a raider. Now, much like our other guns, this thing is highly customizable, offering a ton of customization. And I mean a ton. There's even entirely new categories of attachments in this mod. And of course, this is also added to the level list, so you can find this out in the world in all of its various options. Now, much like our other mods, this one has a ton of customization, and I mean a ton for this one. Over 55 brand new attachments and some brand new attachment categories that we've never done before, allowing you to use this thing in many, many different ways. And of course, there's even custom attachments for the different unique variants available in this mod. Which again, there are going to be three uniques available with their own unique looks and functions that make them behave a little bit differently than the standard monitor. This weapon does feature custom animations as it needs it for the custom reload. There are some mild inaccuracies with the way the charging handle works, but we're kind of limited based on what animations we do have access to. So that's not really something we can do, but it does look pretty all right. Everything is 99% correct, and I think it looks pretty good. If you'd like to get your hands on this weapon, as always, it is added to the level list. Like I mentioned, you'll be picking this thing up after level 40, and it'll spawn on higher level enemies like gunners and raider bosses. Given that this weapon has a level cap of somewhere in the 2 to 300s, I think the level 40 ain't too bad, but that is around the time that you'll start seeing some of the late game weapons in the vanilla game. I believe the vanilla assault rifle spawns somewhere around level 28 as a reference. I think that that covers most of the basic information. Let's go ahead and check out some of the more finer details of this weapon, starting off with its different stats. And as you can see here, we have a base damage of around 45. It's going to be a little bit lower than that in your game, as I do have some different perks and mods that will adjust that, but somewhere in the 40s, again, in fully automatic using 30-06. This is a heavy hitting weapon using the heavy weapons perks. It has a fire rate of 86, so even though it is automatic, it is a pretty low fire rate. It has a range of 203, an accuracy of 55, a weight of 18.4 pounds, which is pretty close to the real life 20 pound gun, and a value of 162 caps. And as you can see, quite a bit of accessory slots here for different attachments that we can equip over at the weapons workbench. And I have to say, I am pretty happy with how this model came out, especially the bolt up here, all of the detailing. I think this thing looks really, really cool and pretty accurate to its real life counterpart. But we have some other things to talk about, like the different uniques available in this mod. Starting off with our first unique here, we have the bootlegger, which is a bit of a pun. As you can see, a 20% chance to cripple the target's leg. You'll notice a bunch of Irish furniture here, including a nice Irish stamp and 
a little uh, leprechaun vault boy, because this thing is actually found in the Shamrock Tap House, the Irish themed tap house, hence why this thing is called the Bootlegger, because it is found in the tap house. A fun little unique, it also offers some different wood textures that are a little bit more beat up than the standard wood, and offering some nice custom decals and attachments here that make this thing look pretty unique. The Lucky Charm is even its own attachment slot that gives some different stat bonuses. For our next unique though, we have the Greased Lightning. This guy has an emphasis on speed. This thing has 75% faster movement speed while aiming, and it has access to a muzzle booster and even a rapid receiver if you want to make it even faster in terms of fire rate. A nice hot rod paint job with a dark blue and white flames and a nice racing number on the back there. This thing is pretty neat, and I have to say it came out pretty cool in-game. I wasn't sure how these would look, but I am happy with the final outcome. This thing is pretty dang cool. Keep in mind, though, if you go for all of the speed attachments, the recoil on this thing is pretty ridiculous and hard to control. If you'd like to get your hands on this one, you actually have to head over to the Glowing Sea and find it in the sunken parking garage amongst all of the vehicles there. A pretty late game area because this is a pretty late game weapon. And finally, we have the Green Mini, offering a nice set of custom green furniture with a nice military star and doing 50% more limb damage. A pretty basic unique, but still a pretty good looking one. If you want to get your hands on this guy, it is actually found in a power armor cage over at South Boston Checkpoint. You will have to get past a master locked terminal to get this thing though. Now, as mentioned, this weapon does have custom animations, so let's go ahead and show those off really quick. And as you can see, the recoil is also quite heavy. We go into ADS, and I'm not trying to control this at all. It does jump quite a bit, but it is still surprisingly accurate. If you pick your shots, you should be able to hit just about any target, even with iron sights. The accuracy per shot is actually pretty dang good. But if you were to try to do that in full auto, you're going to have a bit more trouble. As you can see, staying on target with this thing can be pretty dang difficult. At the very least with no attachments. But when you head over to the weapons workbench, it proves to be a little bit more competent once you throw on some compensators and different stocks. Speaking of attachments, let's go ahead and talk about what is available over at the weapons workbench. Starting off with the receiver section, you have standard all the way up through powerful and also an additional hardened rapid receiver, which has a little bit of a damage increase while still offering the same benefit as the rapid receiver, which is more fire rate, but not nearly as strong as the powerful. It just kind of depends on your play style and if you prefer spray and pray or picking your shots. For barrels, we have a short barrel, a long barrel as comes standard, a finned barrel, a long finned barrel, and a support barrel, which comes with a nice bipod on the end. Then for socks, we have the standard full stock, a taped version of that stock, which improves accuracy a little bit. The Gunslinger stock, which comes with a magazine pouch for faster reloads. A Recoil Compensating stock, which has a nice little attachment here from old LMGs back in the day. And a Marksman stock, which offers a custom cheek pad for better aim with scopes. For magazines, we do have a, quite a few options here, starting off with the Standard Magazine and a Quick Eject variant that has some tape wrapped around it. A Large Magazine, again with a Quick Eject variant. And finally, the extra large magazine, which is going to have a nice curve to it. And, and of course, a quick eject version too that has the tape wrapped around it for a faster reload. Then for sights, we have standard iron sights, glow version of those iron sights, a laser sight for our built-in laser aiming, a hollow sight, a reflex sight, a short scope, medium scope, long scope, night vision scope, and recon scope, all of which Probably aren't recommended for this weapon, but they are available if you want to pick your shots and use this thing at range, as it is still 30-06. For muzzles, we have options for no muzzle, a bayonet, a large bayonet, which comes in the form of a bowie knife, a flash hider, a compensator, a heavy compensator, which is based on the actual Colt Monitor compensator, a muzzle booster, a muzzle brake, a heavy muzzle brake based on a Dushka muzzle brake, and a suppressor. I don't know why you'd ever run this thing suppressed, but the option is there if you want it. Then we have a brand new section for us, which is the accessory slot, where we have a lot of different options, like the makeshift carry handle, which is actually going to be a carry handle made out of a screwdriver. That's right, there is no carry handle by default. You actually get to add that on optionally. We also have the standard carry handle, which is made out of wood, a light carry handle made out of plastic, a flashlight, which is actually functional and can be equipped with different attachments, and a heat shield, which offers a little bit of accuracy while aiming down sights, which looks pretty cool. Definitely a different look for the BAR. And then finally, that leaves one other category, which is going to be materials. You can change out wood stock for plastic if you're into that kind of thing, and it will give you a weight bonus if you want it, but I do definitely prefer wood myself. So yeah, I think that's pretty much everything in the automatic rifle mod. 
If you like the cult monitor and you want to get some classic New Vegas nostalgia, this is definitely a pretty good mod for you. Or if you just want a heavy hitting late game machine gun, this thing is pretty cool as well. It's not going to be anything like a minigun or other heavy hitting ballistic weapons, but it is a nice in between between a rifle and a heavy weapon. So I think it's a pretty cool little weapon for heavy weapon users who still want something that's not ridiculously gigantic. In my opinion, this is a really good alternative for power armor users who are looking for a heavier assault rifle. So yeah, as always, if you want to check this mod out for yourself, it will be linked down in the description below. You can pick it up over on the Nexus. I am not sure if this one has been ported to Xbox yet, but I'm sure it will be at some point in the future. As always, if you enjoy the video, give it a like. And if you enjoy this mod, drop it in endorsement. It really helps out. And if you'd like to support my work directly, you can do so using the link down in the description to support me on Patreon. But of course, that is completely optional. Just donations if you're into that kind of thing. All right, with that, let's go ahead and wrap things up. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoy the mod. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.